because I'm that kind of person. Uh, that's good, especially because my table is made out of wood here. Um, and this, like I said, does get really, really hot. So make sure it's on something that you can't, you know, catch on fire. Um, you don't want to do it on paper or on your cat or something like that. Um, so here I'm going to do it and just show you what it looks like to, to sort of do the preheating. Um, you won't be able to hear it on here, but as you're preheating this, the board's going to kind of snap and crackle a little bit. And that's really alarming sounding, but that's normal. Um, it's just kind of expanding. It's plastic uh, as you heat it up. So as long as you're not, um, you know, really blasting the same place all at once right away, uh, things are probably going to be okay. So what I'm going to do is show you what it looks like, and how far away you need to do it, and kind of how you want to move this nozzle. Um, and then I'm going to kill the video again and uh, finish my own preheating here and pick it back up once I'm ready to actually start hitting it hard and doing the reflow. So here, let's start it. So I'm going to put this on the low setting. And just sort of swirl it around like this. You don't want to get too close right away. You don't want to hit any particular spot all at once. Just generally heat it up. You want to get a nice and uniform temperature, just like that. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. Uh, do that for a good probably five minutes, I'd say, um, flipping the board over uh, and doing the other side about every 30 seconds or so. Um, and then once you feel like you've got it at a nice, uh, nice uniform temperature, once it's nice and hot, like I said, after about, you know, uh, probably three to five minutes, uh, then we'll come back and uh, start the actual reflow process. Okay, I've now spent three to five minutes uh, preheating this board, switching sides every 20 or 30 seconds. So now we're going to start to focus down on these processors and really heat up this area right around these two processors. And again, you want to kind of do this gradually um, so that the gradient never gets all that intense. So I still have it on the low setting, um, but rather than hitting the whole board now uh, entirely, I'm going to just start to focus on this area right around the processors. Um, and you can still, I don't know if you can hear it on this video, it's still sort of snapping and crackling and popping. Um, that's nothing to be alarmed about. Uh, if you've got the whole thing preheated, um, then that should be uh, okay. It's just a little bit of plastic expansion. Um, so really, now we'll start to hit these hard, like this. And the key, again, is just to take this really slowly and gradually. Better to go slow than too fast here. And keep distributing the heat around a little bit. You want to keep the whole thing at a pretty high temperature. As the whole board starts to heat up, if you've got a variable speed or variable temperature heat gun, you can just sort of gradually start to crank up the heat until you hit somewhere around 700 degrees. Um, if you just have kind of the cheap one like I do, uh, you can start doing high temperature bursts straight on the processors themselves, uh, like this. and then click it back down to low again. Um, since mine's uh, up to like 900 or something like that, I don't want to leave it on the high temperature for too long. That's even too hot for this. Um, but I'll just sort of gradually keep bursting it like that. And let it cool for a little bit. 
keep the gradient up. Burst it again. Remember what we're trying to do here is melt the solder connections that are underneath those processors that are connected to the board. Um, so it really does take quite a bit of heat to make that happen. We're, we're melting metal. Um, so it needs to get pretty hot. But you want to make sure you don't get the rest of it too hot because we don't want to melt the rest of the solders uh, that are not part of this. So really keep the high heat pretty focused right on the processor itself. rather than on the rest of the board. You want to do it to both of the processors, both the cell graphics processor and the CPU itself, um, since you really don't have any way of knowing uh, which or both of uh, where the problem is. It's on one or the other or both. So, better safe than sorry, and just keep doing them both. See the glow when I hit it on the high heat there. That's how hot this heat gun is. It's uh, really quite intense. Seems kind of bizarre that I can walk into a store and buy something like this for 20 bucks. God bless America. Again, I'm going to keep the whole board nice and warm to do this. As you get it more heated up, so to focus a little more like that, and leave it in one place for a second or two. Do this for a while. Usually, really heat the processors themselves like this for about five minutes. Um, it's really impossible to do this for too long unless you start to burn stuff. And I'd rather you know, spend a little extra time and make sure it's going to work rather than put it all back together and discover I didn't do it for long enough, and so they didn't actually reflow. So, yeah, do it till your shoulder gets tired of holding the heat down, moving it around.
That's probably about good enough. We've probably gotten our reflow to happen there now. I can feel the heat baking off of this board now. And uh, so what I'm going to start to do now is just kind of gradually start to pull it back a little bit. And kind of perform the opposite operation of what we did to begin with. And again, what we want to keep from happening is having things ever get too out of whack in terms of temperature gradient, temperature differences. So we're going to want the whole board to kind of cool really gradually. Okay, and then uh, we click this off, once we're done, satisfied that things have cooled down, and uh, just leave that to sit for about 15 minutes, you want it to really cool down before you move it, so uh, go make some toast with your heat gun or something, it makes a really nice piece of toast, and um, come on back after 15 or 20 minutes once it's cooled down, and we'll reassemble.